Persimmons by Lee Young Lee recounts various experiences in which uh, Lee either encounters family members or uh, other uh, people who may not have as, as close as a relationship to him, and he has sort of an impossibility with language. I think that the authorial intentions of this poem are to show that we, these sort of discrepancies in relationships can be overcome through sort of mutual love and appreciation. And he uses persimmons to symbolize this sort of love and kindness while also playing with a motif of sort of what is exactly precision uh, to show love and demonstrating the importance of understanding uh, between people. In terms of the impact uh, on me at my first read, I thought that this is actually one of my favorite Lee Young Lee poems that I read. Uh, because of sort of the way that he's able to knit together a masterpiece in terms of the story that he's telling about the impossibility of language. So, starting with the first stanza of the poem, the, he establishes the setting right from the back as inside a classroom from when he was younger and when he sort of struggled with English, obviously being an immigrant, uh, it was difficult for him. And so we see that this difficulty led to his teacher, Mrs. Walker, uh, punishing him, and we think we see that the sort of punishment is due to maybe a lack of love, lack of care, or understanding that existed uh, between them, and that the struggle between persimmons and precision is a struggle uh, for a non-native uh, English speaker. And I think that it's interesting that uh, he uses italics. This is sort of a structural claim that exists throughout many of his uh, throughout the rest of the poem. He italicizes certain words, and that's sort of to show the importance of various words that exist within uh, language. And so I think the next important aspect is there's enjambment uh, shown. So he says how to choose, and then he leaves a space, and then pers uh, persimmons. And uh, he says how to choose persimmons, this is precision. I think the enjambment is important because it shows emphasis on how, to, how precision exists on multiple levels. It's such a minute or simplistic understanding as precision to just know the difference between how to say words, but real precision is, uh, you know, being able to have real-world implications, like being able to choose a fruit that is particularly right. And in this way, he knows precision in ways that Miss Walker never would. So moving on through the rest of this stanza, I think that the language is particularly important because it's sort of inviting uh, the reader. Maybe it shows the importance of how one uh, prepares a persimmon and how it's not an easy process and sort of it's a multi-step. I think langu language such as sniff, how to eat, peel, chew, suck, swallow, now eat, sort of shows that uh, he's giving instructions to the reader about how the, the sort of tenuous process that exists in uh, eating and preparing a, a persimmons, and then sort of saying sort of so sweet all of it to the heart, I think uh, the importance of heart as a symbol is to show its importance or significance. Then we have sort of a break in the next stanza is a setting change. It's when he's with his wife Donna, and I think describing her stomach as white has a couple of implications. First is it shows that he's not like him uh, in terms of obviously being an Im immigrant from outside of uh, a white country like the United States maybe shows the contrast to people like Miss Walker and how he's able to have the sort of understanding between people like him and Donna simply because of the love that they share. But I also think that it could potentially s symbolize sort of the purity or virtue that exists within his wife. Then the description of the yard as dewy and shivering in with the crickets, I think, makes it appear as if they are vulnerable, but that vulnerability is overcome sort of be between the uh, sort of intimate love that exists between them. Now, saying that he teaches her Chinese is quite interesting because it's sort of he's had this difficulty with language, so one might question why he's going out uh, and trying to teach Chinese to others, and I think the reason is is because of sort of that love. Then we can, I can, I'm going to comment on the internal structure that exists within the next three lines because it's interesting as he has sort of crickets, cho cho, and it's like he has the um, English word, Chinese, Chinese word, English word, Chinese word, then it has Chinese word, English word, and I think that what this is showing is how it might have been a mistake on him, his part, it's not formalized, similar to how he forgets things like how to say do or naked in Chinese. He sort of forgets the rhyme or reason in terms of how he's describing it, which shows sort of the impossibility that he has with language. But that doesn't necessarily matter because he loves Donna, and that love is able to overcome it. Then the next three lines sort of show how he is precise, even though he has these mistakes with language because of his ability to love uh, for her. Then the, in the next stanza, we have another sort of change in setting. 
and he's talking about other words that he struggled right with. We see italics again, fright, fight, ren, yarn, showing that these are the words that he is sort of um, having difficulty with pronouncing or understanding the differences. Then the next, like, ten lines or so is a masterful play with words and how describing things like fight, fighting, uh, being frightened when he is fighting, but f uh, fright is what he feels while he is fighting. Sort of this play with words proves that even if he may not be precise in terms of how he's able to understand the words, he is certainly precise when it comes to poetics and understanding the feelings and implications uh, between those words. Then sort of the last last three lines of this stanza are incredibly important because it's bringing together the sort of theme or motif of love that exists and how that's over to o that's able to overcome the impossibility of language and how his sort of mom is able to neatly bring together things like bird and yarn and shows how that sort of love is able to overcome that relationship. Then in the next stanza, we have another setting change and it's back to Miss Walker's class, except she's brought a persimmon uh, to class. And I think that, uh, the characterization, describing it as a Chinese apple, uh, and basically saying that it's a Chinese apple rather than a persimmon, makes it, uh, gives a sort of a negative connotation with tone. I think it's a sort of simplification of the culture that he is trying to say that outsiders might feel. And then I think that the last three lines of the stanza of not knowing whether it was ripe or sweet, and, but sort of watching his face is, is the opposite of the first scene that takes place as it is Miss Walker in this instance who is not precise. As it's sort of metaphysically her punishing herself and other students for not knowing the intricacies of things like Chinese, Chinese cultures and uh, su such. Then sort of the next stanza, it says... Uh, my mo uh, it, when it's talking about, it goes to, back to his mother and talking about persimmons. It mentions the sun again, which I think is a symbol of joy and happiness, and sort of the words that he used to describe it as glowing or golden, that diction is so bright. It is sort of as valuable as a child in terms of its uh, s sort of symbolic importance uh, within his culture. And so now he's sort of going into a story of when he found a uh, persimmons, and he says that it was forgotten. So this could potentially be a metaphor for his childhood, for how maybe he was forgotten, maybe he was potentially excluded, but it is love that, it, that he gives the persimmon, like love that he see, received from his families that is able to make it ripe, like he is able to bloom into a person. We see the, theme, uh, the symbol of a cardinal, which symbolizes hope and love and energy, and then we see the sun repeated again, which sort of shows the importance that persimmons have. Now, we have sort of a final scene that takes place, and this is sort of the scene that takes place with his father. His, uh, his father is waiting for a song or a ghost. Potentially, that's a potential savior from the sort of curse that he has as, as blindness, even though he paints. And then he says that he gives him persimmons. This is a common uh, occurrence that exists in the Lee Young Lee poems as he sort of uh, a gift that is instilled upon them, whether in the gift he gives uh, the splinter as a gift, but it's more of a metaphorical gift of love and kindness, and here he's giving a persimmons, and sort of the characterization of the persimmons as sadness but sweet love shows that he's able to feel for his father in terms of he's losing his eyesight, but that sort of love is able to over overcome it. Now, uh, in the next stanza, we see that he has lost something that he's looking for. I think that knowing what it is, being the paintings, I think it's important that he says he lost it, which means that it was his father's paintings, which means that he, his father actually gave it to him as a gift, which I think sort of shows that sort of overall theme as, of, uh, of love. And then sort of the depiction of the stairs as tired, I think, ties into the way that the father is going blind and that he's aging. And then moving to the end of this stanza, I think that him saying that, uh, asking the stupid question as he describes it, show hints that sort of Lee Young Lee's uh, ability to be naive in some instances, which is a common theme that I've identified throughout a lot of the Lee Young Lee poems. Now, uh, he finally finds what he is looking for, and it is this sort of uh, appreciation and love that he has for his father that propels him to do so. I think the sort of paintings that he finds, what's actually painting is very painted is very interested because we have these sort of plants and these cats, which are so sort of so similar affection of things like growth and life, but at the same time we have persimmons, which sort of shows that persimmons are categorized in the very same nature in which those uh, growing plants are. I think that the line of so full they want to drop from the cloth is so powerful, it's so vivid, it's so depth. There's sort of a weight to the persimmons and a weight to the family uh, that exists. Then 
he sort of we have which is this uh, as italicized which shows that there's sort of a uh, significance to it and then i think it's incredibly important that he says this is persimmons rather than the these are persimmons because he's not saying that you know this is these are the persimmons that you painted because they're persimmons. It's a fruit, maybe it tastes good, but rather it's saying that the, this is persimmons because this is what, sim, what, what persimmons symbolizes, which is sort of love, appreciation, and care, and sort of this is what is inside of him. The next three lines of this uh, stanza talk about, show that his father, though he is blind, he is incredibly precise in terms of its, his ability to paint. Then the last Lines of the poem actually come from the father's perspective, talking about painting them hundreds of times means that it has become a part of him. And you have sort of, you know, I think an allegory to other of his poems, like Dreaming of Hair, the scent of the hair of a, a loved one, or sort of the texture, I think, is it's so it's so detailed and sort of the, or the ripe weight that it has. And I think that he sort of ends with the feelings that we have, even if there's no physical, they, they still exist. And I think that's sort of the overall theme that he tries to get at, which is, this sort of sense of love is able to overcome all, even the hardest or most challenging hardships.